Okay, I'll bring this uh, meeting to order. <coughs> Firstly, I'd like to welcome uh, newly elected and re-elected members of council. Uh, in chambers, all individuals, including members of council, are to refer each other as counselor and last name, or to myself, his worship, or Mayor Jacobson, the CEO, or others will be referred to as Mr. Poole, CEO, Poole, etc. <coughs> I was once told we're here together not by choice, rather in the hands of the, of the rate pair. We are here to represent and work together in order to make the best informed decisions we can make for the municipality now and for the future. I trust in the next four years we'll have good discussions and debate, which I expect will be professional and respectful. We set a standard here for the community. We started our planning, in my opinion, uh, with perhaps long-term or short-term, I should say, with a SWOT analysis uh, by all members of council and review our values, which I believe that we should begin this process uh, very soon and uh, perhaps do that by email and so that all will have an opportunity to respond in their own time. This will lead us to focus on our three or four priorities in the next four years in the planning meeting. I believe administration needs to be involved in this as well, which we will review each January. This will lead to provide, establish a four to eight and a 12 year vision of our municipality, including the entire Swan River Valley, in all part of creating a strategic plan, which will also include asset management. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen, dissolve at the agenda for November 6, 2018, regular meeting. <coughs> Discussion. All in favor? Carried. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio, resolved that the minutes of October 16, 2018, regular meeting of Council be adopted and received. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. <coughs> All right, so we'll move on to our delegations and we'll begin. The oh, sorry. Derek, come in. How's that coming? Oh, well, we just noticed the. I just raised the model. That door was locked. <coughs> Firstly, our delegation with the RCMP, we have with us Sergeant Henson and Corporal Hanna. Or just Corporal Hanna. Just, just myself oh. tonight. Okay, so go ahead. Hello, Mayor and Council. Thank you. I have with me the uh, July, August, and September monthly reports. I think you've uh, probably seen them. Um, if I could uh, just do them all kind of in comparison here. So for July, we had 336 incidents and 63 prisoners. August we had 377 incidents and 54 prisoners and in September we had 276 incidents with 41 prisoners. <coughs> so things were busier in July and August and slowing down for the month of September. I don't have October with me at this time. Can I just interrupt? Was that uh, document forwarded to uh, our CEO? I forwarded to Julie and uh, back I think it was on the 29th of uh, October. We don't have, if you don't mind, you can go over that, but I think that all members of council would like that. So if you can resend that, then we'll have it. Uh, okay, I'll send it to Derek council. as soon as I get back to the office. Okay, thank so. you. Yeah. She, because she, she would had planned on sending it to you, but maybe, I don't know what happened with her, you know. Yes, so. yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Could be, no, it was the 25th, I would have sent it to her, because that's the date I got assigned here, so. Okay. Um, So other than that, that's 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 what we have. So in July we had three assault causing bodily harm, eight assaults, five other threats. In August we had nine assault with a weapon, eighteen assaults, and four other threats. And in September we had three assault with a weapon, sixteen assaults, and eight other threats. Um, sometimes the numbers may seem small, but <coughs> different investigations cause more more time, and so it can can look like that can look like we weren't as busy in certain times, but it might have been very busy investigation-wise, depending on the number of statements and things like that for the types of investigations. Um, any questions or anything? I can 
try to answer. Yes. 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 Uh, go ahead, Councilor Moore. Yeah. Uh, Corporal Hanna, um, how is things going? Uh, I know for a couple weeks ago um, there was some rash of crime of opportunity with breaking into vehicles and stuff like that again, like in a systematic fashion of going down the street. Um, were we successful? Because I, I know a, a number of individuals did make complaints um, or, or statements to the detachment. I would have to look into that to know, you know, what, what the outcome was of those files. I, I, I have not, uh, there's the sheer volume of number of files that we read. I can't remember the, uh, how the outcome of, uh, of the, those particular incidents without looking, looking back then. If you told me when it was and stuff, I could look that up. Also, I have three questions. Uh, I was at a meeting with Paramount Health recently, and they were alluding, they're of the opinion, the speaker was, that with the uh, legalization of marijuana, that there's a big push by the bad guys to make crystal meth more available to the community so they get their hooked on that stuff before they get start buying cheaper marijuana. Is that is there any evidence of that happening in our community? I have not heard, heard of that uh, being an occurrence of her developing, though. No. Okay. Uh, what is the name for the, the special officers, uh, like Sergeant Monroe when he retired and he came back? What do you call that? Reservist. Reservist. Yeah. Is there anything happening with reservists for next summer for Swan River? <coughs> that I don't know the answer to. Steve would know that, that answer. Could we ask you to put that on your list to ask about? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Computers and cars, anything happening there? They keep promising to send some up here to help you guys. Again, that, that topic has been around for many years yeah. and, and I don't know. Uh, when that's going to happen because it's been a topic that continues to rise up and the the answer is never there and certainly at our level we'll, we can only get it whenever they when they uh, put it out from from Winnipeg. Well we hope to be meeting with the D division executive uh, at the end of the month. Do you have any difficulty with us asking about those questions? I believe that Steve would have the answer to those more equipped to answer those questions than myself. Yeah, I have no problem with that, but would you, I'm assuming it would be okay for us to ask the D-Division executive, where's the computers to help you guys? Um, Nudge for They're you. trying as hard as they can, you know, they have to, they have to uh, do everything they can to, to provide the support they can in the areas that need it. There's various, you know, uh, um, needs and they try to meet the needs of, of the entire province so I can't speculate how they decide to, to put something like that out to, to our level. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. And I think that perhaps uh, our... Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Councilor, please. <coughs> this is to do with the library. You guys probably know or maybe don't know. They found a syringe in the back of the men's washroom last week and then this past Friday, I believe, there was a backpack left by the back door that used to be easy access. And it had um, drugs, uh, syringes, other stuff, and they called, your guys went down, picked it up. Um, how do we stop people carrying stuff like that into the library or anywhere for that matter? There is really no way of us monitoring that, right? You come in with a backpack, what are you going to say? You know, dump that out, let me see what's in it. Have we got any rights like to do that? That's something you'd have to decide with, with who's ever in charge of the library as to what protocol they want to have for people coming into the right? library. Um, okay, the other thing was, no, that's all. They have a picture. She sent a picture of a hole in a window and it looks like a BB gun or a worst case scenario, a 22. I don't think she reported that, but I'm thinking she should and you get it looked at. Yes, right? some, sometimes depending on what the picture looks like, a lot of times, if I could just have a look, you know, sometimes uh, some will look perfectly the hole. It's it's possible, but it's also if somebody was spinning their tires and threw a, a pebble at you know when you're when your tires spinning at uh, you know, <coughs> seventy miles an hour and you hit 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 or hit, hit some rock on the road, it can make the same kind of a mark on a window that a that a BB would. So I you know and it only hard to know what what exactly mean that and what, if it was uh, to me that's more like a spin mark to, just in my my brief knowledge because with a BB gun uh, if you shoot a window that's strong like that 
it will make round circles around it. You know, the, re the repercussions of, of it hitting uniformly in that spot. Whereas that one, it looks like there's more stuff going up, up to the top right. and not, not on the bottom so that it could be like a rock rising, hitting and rising up and the force is making the picture seem to be uh, upward. But I'm not a, a lab tech. So I should advise you not to worry about that? No, no, you should report that. But okay. yeah, that's the thing to do is call the office. I'm just saying what can cause a BB mark on a window. It can be a BB mark or it can be a, a tire spinning a rock. This is the bag that was full of stuff. I think your guys picked it up. Okay. okay? Yeah, I know, I know some stuff is reported, and I, I can't remember the exact file, but there there was something, sometimes stuff's reported, and then we're, we're tied up with other things, and by the time we get somewhere, the, the, the thing is not no longer there, and there's no way to fix that, because if we can't get there quick enough, and, and it's gone when we get there, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but... Uh, well, they kept you know, it and called. And so that one was there? Yeah. Okay, because I, I, I think there are times when we get, somebody calls, well, something, somebody else comes along and, and does something with it before we get there, and we don't know. Right. Picked up there. Thank you. Thank you. Corporal Hannah, how were your force, your guys, um, in terms of uh, marijuana cannabis detection as far as um, um, impaired things like that? Have you have you seen anything of that? And is your force or is this force prepared and equipped to deal with those situations if they were to come up? Yes, we're all, we're all becoming more familiar with what, what's, what's coming there. We've, we've had some training uh, work uh, information uh, uh, provided to us. And when it comes to detecting whether someone's impaired by alcohol or a drug, we've always, you know, you have to, you have to be able to recognize those types of things. So um, regardless of the change in the law, we're, we're, we, we all have, we can all form an opinion whether somebody should not be driving a vehicle. So, with, with the new guidelines in place, we're all going to have to become more familiar as, as time marches on, and uh, you know the laws are going to be there. There's going to be changes in the criminal code. We've been instructed that you know certain sections of the criminal code are now going to be different sections to include different wordings to to encompass the the marijuana laws. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Gray. Well, Anna, how are you? I just following up on Constable Wintoni's remark. I, and just for council's advocacy, I, I trust there are a number of DRE, and you might want to explain what DREs are, and, and DRE uh, persons that are stationed in Swan River, I'm assuming? I believe we have uh, subject field sobriety testers. I, I don't, currently at this time, I cannot give you the answer who okay. we have trained in, in, those, in those areas, but I know that we, as far as a drug recognition expert, that's somebody who's trained in recognizing whether somebody's on the influence of drugs at roadside, uh, those type of things. But um, those things are all increasing. They, they have a mandate to be adding more people available to, if a detachment doesn't have somebody, they'll, have, they'll be eventually finding people in a neighboring detachment that's trained. And then the goal is to have people, more and more people trained at every single detachment. That is coming. Now, from my questions, I have several. Are there any particular trends that council should be aware of in terms of crime in the community of Swan River? I don't know if there are. I'm just asking. That's a difficult question. That's why I ask them. I don't know the answer to that at this time. I think some of these questions will be best suited to a policing uh, meeting uh, with who's ever in charge of policing for the town of Swan River. The second is, does the detachment have, um, or does the town have um, a, an, OPA, an opioid strategy in terms of, of law enforcement? Because I, I think that's a particular unique area. Again, I don't, I'm not prepared to speak to that topic at okay. this time. Fair enough. I, I understand. You just, you should know, just take back, because I'm going to ask the same questions again. Mm -hmm. Arising out of that, um, do you do you think, or does the attachment here think that the um, investment by the province and the General Investigation Services Unit be of, of advantage or assistance to the local attachment? Well, any attachment that would have that 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 uh, would would benefit from it, yes. And lastly, are there any particular needs that the attachment has that the council should consider? As always, having having a full strength manpower would 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 be useful. Okay. 
So raising that would be helpful at the end of the month. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Gloria. Uh, just to follow up to Councillor Gray's question on, on uh on the, in your comments on full strength, how many members are we down? I guess, or what, what, what do we need to bring us up to full strength if, if we're not already? Well, I, I believe we are at full strength right now, but it's just with, with you know transfers coming and going and, and different people on courses, you, you can never be fully where you want to be because you know every detachment, we all know what would fix a detachment is always a couple extra people. And because you're not always for working every shift with everybody there. There's somebody on course or there's somebody away and then so you can't function at the best capacity that you could if everybody was there. Because like if everybody was here at all times and the shift was exactly the way it's designed to work, it would you know there'd be much more visibility and there'd be much more progress on taking statements and compelling people to court. But there's shortages across the province and always has been shortages here. Uh, you know, it might, it might appear on paper that every, there's enough people, but there's never enough people. You know, there's more people <coughs> getting in every community. There's more, more incidents being reported that are, that are uh, quite more involved than than, than <coughs> ever before. And there, so there's always a need for more people. So, okay. Something you said just reminded me of something that might be of assistance in Cost Memorial's um, question about crimes of opportunity. Would, uh, I think I know the answer, but I want to hear it confirmed. Um, would it be safe to say that the best method for dealing with those kinds of, of issues is what you just described, which is visibility? That is, the more visible a police presence is, the less likely those kinds of crimes are to be committed. Uh, because investigation of them is incredibly difficult. Yes, I think I think visibility is always going to got, going to reduce some of the crime, but the people who are determined <coughs> to commit the crime, they're going to find the place where okay. no one is visible. They're going to find those places because that's just the nature of someone who's committing crime. Is they're they're not going to walk down the same street that they saw the police on one day or or several people. They're going to wait and find a place that's, that's, that's the road less traveled, so that they can continue on doing their business that they need to do. Okay. That satisfies everyone. I think that uh, I think the Protective Services Committee, uh, in part, is probably the RCMP, uh, are going to have to organize a meeting and have some discussion if they're taking any notes tonight, especially, and uh, bring forth some of those uh, in a different meeting and be prepared for D Division. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, 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 I should have written down some of the things that you've covered off there, but I couldn't possibly write down everything and uh, we certainly want to meet with you on a different uh, platform to, to discuss things. Absolutely. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we'll move on to uh, delegation with Mr. Mullen with the Manitoba <coughs> 55 plus games. So. <coughs> um, good evening. Pardon? Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm here as the chairperson uh, for um, hosting the Manitoba 55 Plus Games um, presented by PlayNow.com. Um, this is a flagship of a provincial organization aging in Manitoba and we were chosen to host the, uh, the 55 Plus Games in 2019. Um, the games are made up of two sections, uh, March the 18th to the 20th of 2019 at the Swan River Curling Club. Uh, we'll be hosting stick curling as well as regular curling with age groups of 55 plus and 65 plus for men's, ladies and mixed teams across the province. And then the, uh, the regular games will be from June the 11th to the 13th of 2019 uh, here in Swan River and possibly we might need a couple of uh, venues uh, in the Swan Valley. Um, this uh, There will be approximately 22 events during the three days um, as well as there will be opening and closing ceremonies, banquets, uh, a dance as well as other uh, evening events planned and approximately we are hoping to have uh, 550 to 650 athletes attending and even at our age we still consider them to be athletes. Uh, economically we hope to raise uh, between 250 to 300 thousand dollars 
in the Swan Valley as far as uh, people coming from outside the area. Um, and so what I'm here for is we're asking the town of Swan River to rent the following facilities from June the 10th to the 14th. Um, and as it gets closer, I'd be able to give you a more detail as to um, exactly the, each venue, the number of days that we would, but for now, June the 10th to the 14th, uh, we would need <coughs> the Veterans Community Hall, the arena, um, the Legion Park, including the Three Diamonds and the Canteen, the swimming pool, and one day uh, for, a, for cycling around the town where we would have to, uh, we would have a, an area, uh, we'd have to have the RCMP in that, but we would, we will look after all of that. Uh, as well as the town, I understand that the town has a tent, so um, possibly the renting of the town tent. We would also ask if it was possible, uh, down by the Bocce uh, courts in the uh, Legion Park, whether the town would be able to build two pitches for horseshoes. Um, there's not a lot of, a lot of cost there. It would be a matter of a little bit of lumber um, and some sand. And, uh, and those things would be able to be used permanently once they're, once they're there. If, if the town isn't willing to do that, then would they allow us to build them and leave them there as a legacy or, or whatever? Uh, and we would just have to uh, get some material donated in that so that we would carry on doing that. Um, and um, because this is, uh, we're asking the business community to, to step forward uh, with helping out with the event. Um, we're asking that if it's possible that the town of Swan River would, would issue a grant for, for the cost of the facility rental or a substantial portion of the rental. Um, other municipal, municipalities that have hosted, uh, have had their communities host, they've, they have granted up to as high as $5,000 uh, to, to be able to host this. All profits from the event will will, will go back. Uh, um, there's a percentage that has to go to the to the organization um, aging in Manitoba, but the other uh, half of the profits will, will go back to our community, with the main focus towards anything to do with 55 plus. Um, so. Um, if there's needs or whatever profit there is, we would be looking at things that would, would be able to help uh, in the area for, for the 55 plus. That's, that's it. Any questions? Council I. Uh, do you have a cost, a fixed cost of <coughs> you guys independent of the facility rentals? Um, well, we'll be raising, uh, it, it'll be similar to um, when we hosted the Canadian Mix. We'll yeah. be going around, we've got some uh, some sponsorship as far as businesses and and that um, so that we'll we'll be setting it up as far as like a gold silver and bronze sponsor will be uh, there'll be revenue earned from from the the dances the the banquet those kinds of things uh, there'll be 50 50s during that type of type of uh, thing um, there's also, we'll likely be asking some of the organizations um, as far as the local service clubs and, and possibly some of the others if they want to get involved as far as canteens and stuff like that. Um, and so uh, all, of, all of that revenue then will offset uh, to the costs. Um, there will be, um, if I look at last year's uh, Do you have a cost that's independent of the, you, know, you have to do your advertising, your promotion, that's going to equate to cost yeah, money. Well, the total, then, the, then the rentals would be in addition yeah, to the that. The total cost of the uh, of, of everything last year, when they had it at Glenboro, mm -hmm. there was about $24,000 worth of cost. And the rental portion of it would have been, um, So there's meals and banquets and that in there too, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, there's going to be about uh, 1933, about 
I would say close to ten thousand dollars worth of, of rentals because not only are the facilities that we're asking for the town, um, I have a <coughs> uh, meeting with the school division, and I've already talked to the regional school, and I've got uh, they're going to make make uh, their facilities uh, available to us, and I'm going to the school division on the 12th of November uh, to to get approval because uh, we're going to be using the um, the uh, SVRSS gymnasium, the the track, as well as one ball diamond, and uh, uh, floor, floor curling or something. Yes, uh, the floor curling was going to be in the are in the arena. So once so you had your scheduling, assuming you could ask Derek or Derek's staff, say they want the cost to, to use that amount of time. Yeah, and then we could make a decision. Yeah. Like right now, we basically need those dates booked off, and then um, uh, sometime in the new year, we would be able to get you a, uh, a proper, uh, as far as how many days. And the reason why we would want the 10th to the 14th is because the 10th, we would need some time to, to make sure everything was properly set up. And because the uh, it's from the 11th to the 13th, the 14th, we would have to tear down and, and get everything taken away. Councillor Delorier. I uh, guess first of all, I just want to commend Mr. Mullen and his group on uh, once again bringing uh, bringing events like this to the community. They've they had uh, past success with the mixed curling a year or two back, and looks like they're at it again. So uh, commend them on that. And I guess as far as where to go with this, we're not going to be able to make a decision tonight. But I suggest we refer it to our recreation com committee. These are mostly recreation facilities. It's going to impact the. The recreation department budget the most so um to refer to the committee to make a recommendation to council on how to how to proceed uh, outside of of course uh mr pool being booking the actual dates and all that uh, that you can go ahead and do but as far as what the town's involvement would look like uh if we refer that to the committee would be my suggestion yeah some of the other venues that we uh the swan river golf course will need those there's there's 22 events that they're, they're planning um, so the Swan River golf course is, uh, uh, is is also being booked the um, the senior center uh, is in, is going to be booked because there's there's different types of cards and you know, bridge and, and those kinds of things as well and uh, and so um, it's just not only the town facilities that we're asking for but it Okay, Councilor Gray. Um, the Curling Club and Golf Course, are they contributing anything? Just Well, the, um, the, the golf course, there will be a, um, there's a fee that the golf course or that the entrance pay. Um, and what they do is they pay uh, uh, 20 for nine holes of golf. They pay uh, they pay twenty dollars, and for eighteen holes of golf, they pay pay thirty dollars over and above the fee that they pay for for entering. And with that that uh, that money there goes towards um, a golf cart and green fees. So for that, the curling club um, there will be uh, again um, a, a rental charge, but we're hoping that. That we'll go, we'll be going to them and seeing if they, they can either waive it or, or give us a, uh, a a break on the on the rental because there will be some revenue that they'll be receiving from from the because um, uh, there will be a banquet uh, for that uh, as well as any any bar revenue or or they can run the 50-50s and, and that kind of stuff so it'll be a, a revenue generator for the for the community center. Um, second question is. Have, has the community of Swan River Park previously hosted this game? Um, they hosted it, but it's been a lot of years. I think it was, it's probably been uh, over 15 or 20 years ago. And do we have any idea whether it was successful or not? Uh, I believe yes, it, it was. was, yeah. I think it was, but I, I, I think yeah. I know the answer. Um, the last question. Um, would we have some issues to, to work through, but if the town suggested that it was going to ensure that there was no losses, that is, that we would we would make sure that the cost of this, um, if there was a cost overrun, 
um, that it wouldn't be billed, that we would bill it, but if you were into a negative, we wouldn't bill that. Would that be an acceptable alternative? Um, well, I don't think that we're, we're not going to have a, have a deficit. deficit. I, can, I can almost guarantee it because um, uh, anything that, that we've been involved in and before, we make sure that, that there's, there's uh, profit in there. Um, for example, the, uh, uh, the Canadian curling or the Canadian mixed mm -hmm. um, had, a, had a, uh, a profit before the rental to the community center uh, over thirty thousand dollars, and uh, and then when it was all said and done, it was uh, um, about uh, eighteen to twenty thousand dollar profit. And so we'll, one way or the other, we'll make sure that there there will not be a deficit. I can, I can almost guarantee it. So um, the other thing too is 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 we're also planning on going to uh, a couple of the other municipalities because it's just not. Swan River, uh, it's the Swan Valley, and, so, and because there's going to be residents that are from the whole valley that are going to be participating in it, so we're also going to be going to some of the municipalities there and asking if they can, if they would be interested in helping out and, and, and with grants as far as hosting this. Councilman Tony. Mr. Mullen, in regards to not showing a deficit with this uh, event, do you have any concrete plans as to where profits would be allocated for, um, you did state that 50% would be allocated back to the community, do you have any concrete um, determinations as to where that might go at this uh, time? It will be, uh, it'll be something, uh, and again, um, I'm just one of the community members, um, we would, after it was all said and done, we would have to sit down and determine uh, what we think is is needed in the community for for the 55 plus, and if not, then uh, it would be going to 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 something else. But all of the money will will stay in the community and will be used for for something that that is needed. Um, and going back to the the Canadian mixed, uh, part of the of the profits there. Uh, $10,000 of that was donated to the community foundation and used as a legacy for junior curlers, which will stay there for eternity. So if that is something that the, commu the committee decides to do for something towards 55 plus, then that's one suggestion. Otherwise, if there's some other things that, that are needed, then uh, the money would be going to that. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mullen. Um, I guess, like we was mentioned earlier, that I think it'll be probably deferred to our rec committee, and they will make a recommendation. And we'll hopefully, one thing we have a we have a um, uh, another meeting on the twenty second of or twenty first of November. <coughs> I would ask if I could just get the okay to um, that that those things have been booked as far as union resolution. Uh, no. So as long as the, as long as the facilities are available, so that I can make sure that that they're available, then that's all that. For now, that's all we would yeah, need. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll yeah. I, I guess just a housekeeping note on the availability. If they're not available, Derek, when you talk to your employees, can you make sure that Mr. Mullen gets a phone call right away? Yeah, yeah. I talked to Patty, and she had she didn't have exact dates, but if she did, she would. She'll make sure that the okay. hall, the rink, everything on the town side is okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to correspondence. Five point one. Swan Valley School Division. You see the three uh, attachments there. You had an opportunity to read, uh, basically on the uh, uh, consultation that was done mm -hmm. uh, there, mm -hmm. and the probe research. Is basically saying that the majority of Manitobans want uh, school boards to stay local. And uh, there's a little bit more there, but uh, any discussion on that at all? Let's move by Councillor White. Sorry? Mr. Mayor, why is the, uh, your Worship, why is the pre budget consultation mixed in with that? Or am I missing something? Is it part of that? Councillor Dory. I guess if I can just speak to Councillor Gray's question, um, I, it's a, 
uh, a pamphlet with an education perspective on some of the uh, pre-budget uh, or some of the budget proposals. So I, I guess the not to speak to the school division's intention, but they want to make bring awareness that these are some of the changes, and if they can encourage people to speak oh, out I on see them. What you're saying. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, that. their pre-budget consultation with regards to the school division. Oh, I got them to the school division. Yeah. I see that now that I looked at it. again. I just saw it again. Fair enough. Moved by Councilor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen, resolved that the information from the Manitoba School Board <coughs> should be received. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, so moving on to, uh, we have the Council Re Re Reconsidering Decision Resolution 2018-430, which has uh, uh, been accepted and, and reviewed uh, or brought back up at our next meeting on uh, November the 20th. Council has received information, I guess, basically on that as far as um, what the results of defeating that. Um, they received that information last night, I believe, and they had a chance to review it. It is, uh, I guess, up to me if we want to have a short discussion about that, or if not, we can leave that at uh, our next meeting. So, um, if that's the, the wish, then we will leave it at the next meeting, or if anybody does want to, I'll leave it open to for a discussion. Um, I guess the, the resolution in question uh, I voted against and I guess in principle if, if all quotes are equal in, in my mind we should be taking the lowest one that isn't the decision that council made at the time and I guess I, I fear that that We'll, we'll, like we're going to open ourselves up to a, to a whole can of worms if we if we uh, reverse it now. And I mean, I, I'm not opposed. To, I've brought resolutions back that I didn't agree with to, to tr reverse them as well in the past. I'm not opposed to the process, but I think we need to be careful, especially considering that we've sent out a letter of intent and, and in that regards, and, unless there's other things that I'm not seeing. So I I, I wish that that uh, you know as a, as, a, as a rule we would we would look to the, to the lowest bidder if all bids are equal if they all if they meet all other qualifications then uh, then I think uh, in the taxpayers interest the lowest bidder should be the one but uh, now we have a, a, a quandary to deal with I, I, I wasn't going to have to be because I, I think the process is the process, and I respect that that's the appropriate process. So everyone has time to think about it and so on. Um, and um, who will confirm that, that when I advised that I wanted this reconsidering hospital and Tony and I talked about it, that we wanted things like the legal opinion and so on, so that we had a full description of what was going to happen, what our alternatives were. And, and reconsideration doesn't necessarily mean changing. It simply means reconsidering at this point. Um, it has two impacts. One is to look at that particular decision and see if there's a, a reason to overturn it. Uh, the second is it is a point for us to think through the process of procurement going forward, which is actually the next item. So it's, it, it, I don't want to preclude, I don't, if others have comments, but really my intention was to just give notice and we would have a more fulsome debate and on, June, on November 20th. And that's fair. Okay. So if there's no other further, then we'll move on to the next uh, item, and that's new business under review of the town procurement policy. Um, obviously, that's something that was brought up, so uh, if we want to have an open discussion about that. Uh, but uh, obviously, it's been brought up that we can review this, and uh, it will go before uh, the government and the finance committee. So if there is any other further discussion on that, then we can open that up to the floor. But if not, then we will. Councilor Moria. Uh, seeing that this was a resolution back in 2004, the only thing that I would suggest is that maybe when it goes back to committee that they look at the dollar values with inflation, but that's yeah. my only suggestion on that that I would have concern with. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Councilor Gray. Yes, Your Worship. Um, 
The only other thing I would say <coughs> uh, is that um, my inclination on those kinds of things rather than policies is to have bylaws to say that this is the way we're going to do business, that it's structured. And you can build in off-ramps even into uh, off-ramps is a word, I'm sorry. It's, but you can build in catch-alls that, that allow you flexibility into bylaws. Um, but it should be, I want to echo Councilman Glory's comment that that if we're going to have a policy that we're open for business, then we're open for business, and we're going to say we're going to treat things in a certain way. And so that's the that was the import of the policy previously, and I think we really need to have a pretty fulsome debate about that. So that I, I think we're going to discuss it in that committee. I, I agree with that process, um, and I, I, we've already talked about that in in that committee about that process piece. But um, so it's going to impact to some extent. The urgency of it is it's going to impact to some extent that reconsideration, but it is a pretty important piece. Council and Tony. I definitely agree that we need to look at this um, policy in terms of it being a policy and um, in terms of it being a bylaw, yes, rather than a, um, than a policy. I think that that holds a little more weight, compels us to the, um, the pure procurement that we are following. Um, and I definitely think that we need to discuss that and look at that as being in terms of a bylaw so that in a certain situation moving forward that the situation that has happened in the past cannot easily happen again. I think that um, by us overriding a, a simple policy in the two, um, two events that we had is, is not doing good business. That's my two cents on that. Okay, Councillor Delorier. Um, I, I agree that the committee will have to look at this, but in, in preparation for that, can we direct uh, Mr. Poole to possibly uh, uh, survey some other municipalities and see what their uh, procurement bylaws look like, just so we can do some comparing, see what other, see what else is going on out there, what our what our neighbors and peers are doing. Um, if, if we could just be so bold as to ask that for the uh, committee meeting. Yep, Councillor Gray. I, I just want to add one thing. Um, one of the things, the procurement policy deals with acquiring physical assets. Um, and we've had a general uh, support discussion in our committee already, and so I'm going to share with Council. Uh, for me, <coughs> it means pro the procurement of every kind of good or service. It includes things like how we would procure legal services, how we would procure accounting services, how we would procure consulting services, that there would be a, a, a process so that, that we have an open, here, and, and not me, obviously. We, I know. Yeah, so you laugh. I, I know. I just think think the way you're thinking, and, and, and we need that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Google is a good lawyer, right? Yeah, well, yeah. And, 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 they don't and you know, that's not the right way of doing yeah. it. But, and so that's that's what the real intent was to get it, so that we're consistently doing everything in a way that is measurable, transparent, and gets best value for the dollar. Sorry, I wasn't sure that you were. No, no. <laughs> So, uh, I saw you laugh. I thought, oh, just so, then, so just on that, then the committee will uh, continue to review this and come up with a uh, solution or a plan and bring it forward to council. And Mr. Poole will uh, do some uh, research into other municipalities for us to uh, uh, review as well. Yeah, the committee can let me know the date, and then I've got a deadline of how many. I'll, just, I'll be asking several municipalities. But, okay. We'll, we'll organize that over email. And we'll yeah. That, you know. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next on the agenda is the offer to purchase Swanner for Municipal Development, some, uh, a lot there from a uh, resident here in the town of Swan River. So before I read the resolution, uh, go ahead if anybody has questions. Councillor Gloria. I, I guess just, uh, I, you know, it says our SRMD on there, Swan River Municipal Developer, just for the new, new councillors uh, at the table. Uh, the town of Swan River owns a development corporation that owns most of the land and that, uh, any land that the town developed <coughs> at one point in time was done through that development corporation so th that's just the background on, on why the sale is being done through Swan River, Swan River, Swan River Municipal Developers. Okay. I got it. Councillor Wontoni. I've got a question with that as a whole, um, being new to that, do we, is there a policy um, for a certain individual for, for buying property from this corporation, or do we have, or does council have 
receives a letter for one dollar versus ten thousand dollars and makes a decision on that? Is there, do we have a policy or guidelines that we're, we're to follow um, the purchase of any said property owned by this corporation? Well, I mean, it, basically, any of the properties that we have are at assessed value, yep. and that's what the price tag is on that property. Any resident then can come forward and make an offer on that property, and we either accept it or we don't accept it. I, I, and that, I just have to speak that I fully intended on asking Terry to assess the value of this property, but I never did get around to asking him, and I wanted to have that information for tonight, but it's not here. Um, just a comment on that, on your comment, your worship. Uh, some of our, pro most of the properties are on assessed value. The properties down by uh, end of Dixie Road there, uh, they were priced at basically what it cost to develop divided by square foot of each property, a formula of that nature. So they may not reflect assessed value. And then in the southeast corner, we had a program, or we still do have a program that never officially ended where. We, we were selling below assessed value uh, for, I think it was $2,000. For $2,000, uh, for, for if it had natural gas service and $1,000 if it didn't, or no, no. right? 2000 $2, with the caveat, you had to build up to lock up stage within two years. Right. And there was, and the, in that caveat, there was minimum build requirements of 1,000 square feet, and there was a few other details. But, so there is some differences. Councilman Tony. Uh, to reiterate, I do, I do remember seeing that um, program last year or the year before on that. I guess the other question is, and I, uh, Mr. Poole answered that, is we're being asked to make a decision on this um, based on assessed value and we don't have that information. Um, I, I, I think that I feel that I don't have enough information on that to make a decision at this time. So. Go ahead, Councilman. Um, if it helps, uh, Councilman Tony, uh, the vacant lots in that end, end of town are usually around eleven to thirteen thousand dollars assessed value with no structures on it. That is correct. The average would be ten thousand, between eleven and thirteen thousand in that southeast development. Okay. Councilman Tony, and that's generally what the asking value is, and, and the offer that, uh, or the sale price that we seek as the assessed value or uh, no I don't believe we've sold one for the assessed value I I, I can't remember one uh, in my time my, here in my ten years and I don't know if I couldn't say if, if we if we ever have and based on that information, do we have any guidelines that are set forth for purchasing property as far as developing or um, timelines to develop on that property, or we just allow the sale of properties? Sorry, I'm asking a lot of questions well, because I don't know the answers to those. Uh, well, to answer that question, you asked the timelines. If they were given a, let's say, a deal on it, then they had the two years for a lockup. Um, the usual commercial practice is to sell things for the fair market value. Fair market value has a pretty traditional legal definition. That's what a willing purchaser will pay a willing vendor. Firstly, I'm stunned that we have an assessed value at a number that nobody's ever paid. That's like the joke about the guy goes in the hotel and, and he sees the, you know, the guys there and, and tips, average $20, and throws a $20 bill and the, the guy just goes faints. He says, well, what's wrong? Isn't that enough? He says, well, it's the first time anybody's ever paid the average tip. <laughs> it, it's bizarre. Like, what's... <laughs> We should be selling the lots for what the fair market value is. What can we get for them? What's a reasonable price for them? Um, and, and so, I'm uh, just uh, disclosing that I've had a couple of those in my office, and three thousand dollars is about an average of what people pay for a lot. I, um, so I'm a little stunned that we're asking eleven. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's somebody who's going to come in and we're going to fleece them. I'm not sure that's exactly what we want to do. So. But, but I'm also stunned that the assessment branch has given us an assessed value of $11,000, 
when there's not an, apparently an, a single comparable that would justify that. So I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed about that. That just seems to me wrong and it tends to undermine my confidence in the assessment values of any of our properties. So there are those three things that we need to consider. And, and I agree with Principal Tony. I, I, firstly, um, when these come, I, I'm assuming, um, but I wanted to confirm, is there a recommendation that we accept? Uh, or is there just a, because you, the, I would prefer if it comes with something other than what we eventually end up with as fair market value, that there be a recommendation. And, and I will say, I was looking at land sale agreement, and unless this is a deal, unless we're giving somebody something and therefore we're saying to them, you have to build within two years because we're giving you a deal, then that's a fair consideration. But if we're selling them something at the same price we would have to sell to anybody else, if we were any kind of commercial developer, then on what basis do we insist that they build? That seems to me unconscionable. Councilor Morial. Uh, to answer uh, Councilor Gray's question, that if if, uh, if people paid the full assessed value according to the assessment branch, like the ten thousand, whatever it is, then there is no caveat that they have to build on it within the two-year period. And that's our, if someone purchases for the $2,000 or whatever, lower the, the assessment and they have that caveat, if they're not gonna make or not fulfill that requirement, then they're obligated as with the contract to pay the full market value to get out of that clause. That they can have it just as a vacant lot for whatever they want. So. I, I apologize, Councilor Morial. Clearly, I'm not speaking as as clearly as I intended. I think if it's if there's no chance we're going to sell it for eleven thousand dollars, I think it's unconscionable to list the price at eleven thousand dollars. I can't. That's just unconscionable. It's wrong. Can you imagine doing business with somebody? You go to Councilman Tony's restaurant. He says, "Well, a steak is eighty dollars, but for you, I'll give it to you for forty. I, I, like really? That, and, and, and has anybody ever paid more than forty? No, but it's eighty on the menu. Like I mean, that just it makes no sense. What is the value of the lots? And we should sell it for that. And if, if we're giving people a discount, look, if the value of the lots is six grand, and that's you know we we could reasonably expect someone to come in and pay six grand, then we should go to the assessment branch and say, what the heck are you people doing? Those lots aren't worth that money. And that's the first piece. And I know it impacts our tax base because every other law is assessed at whatever it's assessed on. But assessment is supposed to be what you can get for it. It's not some magical number that they dream up. And fair market value is fair market value. And so if we're if we're if three thousand dollars is what we can get, if that's what people will pay, then that's what people will pay. If 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 it's six thousand dollars, and then I so my problem isn't with whether or not we have whether or not they're getting a deal based on the assessed value. My problem is, do we have any idea what the fair market value is? And then if they're getting a deal from fair, fair market value, I don't have any problems with saying you have to build, because that's the deal. But at this point, I haven't got a clue. And I can tell you, it would be, I, Tony and I talk a fair amount, and, and both the sort of view, what I had to do with my own money, right? So. It would be a long shot that you would expect me to, out in that corner over there, pay $11,000 for a vacant lot. I think if you're waiting for that, you'd wait a long time. I, actually, I, I misspoke earlier. There, there has been one person that I remember that has paid uh, $10,000 for, for the empty lot, and he sold the empty lot for $10,000, no conditions. Okay. And all, all the other lots that I've ever been a party to selling, in that corner have been in the two thousand dollar range with with the with the uh, land sale agreement. I can't remember in that southeast corner that that would be fair market value because that's all we've ever been able to get. That's true. And I do recommend the sale of this lot. I've talked to the owners and they're they're excited. They they want to get started and uh, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't accept this. Council Moran. Um we did have a sale this summer where an individual did purchase originally with the $2,000 but failed to meet the requirements and he did pay 
the full assessed value of the property, and that was this summer. So, so. Okay, so how do you want to proceed? We have a recommendation. I, I, they're prepared to sign the land sale agreement? They actually already have. Then, okay. So I'll call the resolution and move by uh, Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve that the offer to purchase lot 4, plaid 2372, Civic, address 1303, 3rd Street South, from Tiffany Barker and Scott Beerman, and the amount of $3,000 plus applicable taxes be accepted on the condition of the signing of the sale agreement. Discussion? On faith, Councillor White. I think the discussion should be based on what uh, Councillor Gray said. I think we've got to send a note or a message of some sort to the assessor, perhaps say, hey, we've got to get down and have coffee together because this isn't fair. One guy's paying 10 grand, one guy's paying 2 grand. I appreciate there's a difference, but we need to sit with those guys. Councilman Tony? I just want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Poole for the recommendation based on the sale of that lot. I think that clears up a lot of uh, any questions or concerns that I did have, so I appreciate that. All in favor? Carry. Yeah. All right, so moving on to report, Superintendent of Works report. Any questions to Mr. Poole on Superintendent of Works report? You have it there. <coughs> I guess I did want to point out to Council that our uh, just to pay some attention to the garbage truck issue we've been having. Uh, thanks to our mechanics, they did they did get our trucks back on the road so we can continue to, to pick up commercial commercial garbage. But that is the number one effect of when both our trucks go down is we have no way of picking up dumpsters. So it's uh, it's pretty tough when it happens. It's it's not pleasant, but. Uh, those trucks have been on the replacement plan for some time, so I guess the Transportation Committee expected meeting uh, pretty soon to discuss what we're going to do with our... First off, you need to be up to date on, on where the, the garbage trucks are going and basically all of the, the... You know, I guess the Environmental Committee will be involved in that too, but... Uh, 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 yeah, just expect that there's going to be a meeting to address our garbage truck situation. <coughs> But uh, this is the fourth time this year that we've had to pick up with a loader and, uh, and dump trucks. Councillor Morio. Um, Mr. Poole, um, how are we making out? We started the initial process of looking into the costing and availability of a lease, of like a short term lease, while we continue the garbage discussion with the whole project. But uh, with the capital purchase or moving that down the road with the potential lease, have we gained any traction with that or got any more information that No, it's the the problem is the compactor. The truck is isn't a problem. Is it's uh, the compactor manufacturers aren't allowing that to happen. And that's the responses I'm getting from two of two of the main suppliers of, of compact vehicles. So uh, yeah, I guess that is when we got that response it was it was really dropped until we until we get these uh, environmental committees back up and and go from there. Councilor Gray. I, unless I'm missing something. Um, isn't the process that we take this issue and, and as councillors I'm expecting that it's been identified as a priority issue. That committee will the transportation committee will deal with it as a priority issue yeah. and bring it back. Yeah. Isn't that and, and I think that's probably where it is right now, and, and, and it is so, referred to the uh, committee. Perfect. Okay. But it, yeah, it, I think it's recognized by all council that it's a priority. I mean, you can't have a truck that breaks down four times a year. Oh, exactly. Okay, any other questions? Council? I just want to give kudos to the guys for the great fall cleanup. You could tell them thank you. It did a great job. And also the back lane lowering thing. Phew. Good for you, yes. Mr. Poole. Is the gentleman happy? Uh, no. <laughs> no, we complain. Uh, that was my question. Okay. Are you happy? I am. And that's good. Counts, uh, moved by Councillor uh, Morial, seconded by Councillor Wintona, resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Any further discussion? Favor? Carried. 
Okay, we've got the fire chief's report. Mr. Poole will also respond on that as best he possibly can. <coughs> or the uh, chairperson for protective services will respond. <laughs> I have a couple questions. Councilor White. Uh, the Chair of Protective Poole. Services. Yeah, I realize that. I saw that today. Uh, there's no, no fire chief in Bozeman now. I did read it. Uh, is that going to impact us? Not having a fire chief in Bozeman? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, if they, the more calls they get with mutual aid, we have to go assist. Mm -hmm. From what I know, my limited experience with the fire chief. Yeah, department. same as what. So the other question, sir, was uh, I, I, I think if I'm reading it correctly, that they went to Baldy Mountain? Yes, well... I have trouble visualizing that. I was told by the chief that I would be asked, so I am, I am going to... You just read his response for the Baldy Mountain. Oh, you're checking it. Okay, that's only two questions I have. Thank you. So in his fire fire report, the chief mentioned a request for Minnetonas for mutual aid for a call to Baldy Mountain. Yeah. We did not go to the due to the distance and it being a res, a response by contract for Minnetonas, but we did have members respond to their hall. Therefore, the count for man hours and the response. Ten hours. Was it there? One hour to go to Bowling Mountain back and I was having trouble. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Council Moria. Uh, further to that, um, I'm aware of that situation. It was a power line, that uh, tree fell on a power line, that there was a request from Manitoba Conservation for the fire department to go there. And as uh, the fire chief stated that they provide fire service to the park under contract, the, the, pardon me, the Minnetonas Bozeman. And Minnetonas Bozeman requested mutual aid from Swan River and before the crews got responded um, our crews here determined that no um, that's too far at Grandview Fire Department is actually closer and that's who was actually responded to that department or right. incident it was the Grandview Fire Department. Councilor Delore, you have a question? No. Okay. So we'll go, sorry Councilor Gray, sorry. Um, in terms of Councilor White's question, Mr. Poole, I take it that there's no issue of our capacity to provide that coverage? You know, that I would have to get back to you. The yeah. fire chief would have to respond to that. Then, if you could ask him to provide that response. I just want to make sure we have no capacity issues. As long as we have no capacity, then there's no problem. But if there's a capacity issue, we should look at that. You might um, have the I did have that conversation with the fire okay. department. Um, and he told me what it was that uh, since he fit felt that that was a service contracted with Minnetonas Bozeman to uh, Manitoba Conservation, um, that there was inappropriate for Minnetonas Bozeman to use mutual aid for us to respond into that. Like, we could definitely do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I was Council White, or, uh, Council White talked about the fact that there's no charge even Bozeman anymore. Oh, that time. And that we have, we're gonna have increased calls. And I just wanted to make sure one of the things I always want to make sure is that we're not challenging our own capacity, or, or at least if we've expanded our capacity, we expand our, we ex if we've expanded our calls, we expand our capacity, so that we're, we're never out of capacity. Correct. That's all we want. No, that, that's a very good question, and the chief, yeah. I'll, I'll have the chief get back. Perfect. So Thank you. Currently with that, the uh, South Wanda River Fire Department's on the automatic mutual aid to admin the Bozeman area already. So as soon as they get a page, we're automatically paged. So them acting, having a fire chief right, no fire chief right now, has no impact on the current operations uh, okay. there. Um, there will be some internal discussions amongst the fire chiefs in their mutual aid district and bringing back some discussions with that council that they have oh. to figure out. So, Let me cover where I'm actually going with this. Um, is there a need for every little area to have its own fire department or would an integrated fire department make more sense. And that, that's really where I'm going with it. I, I, I'm just, I, I know that that's been canvassed in the past, but it just strikes me that, that that's a perfect example. We have a, a community that's, that's going down in population, and, and the idea that they would then replace their fire chief so that we would, <coughs> and so it just seems to me that we should raise the issue that an integrated fire department, and, and I don't, but by that I clearly, I want to be clear, I'm not suggesting that what we is centralizing Swan River. I am talking about sort of a, a broader context of it's a big fire department, it's a big area, and, and let's just make sure we have everything we need. It's the exact conversation that's going with the 
mutual aid district perfect currently perfect so councilor Dorian, any other questions no. okay so uh moved by councilor morio second by councilor but Tony resulted the October fire chief report be received. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry. Protective Services is going to be busy again too, I see. It's good with me. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, carrying on, uh, we have the, uh, the final report for the Swan River Centennial Arena and recommendations. Uh, you see that there. It's a fairly large report, uh, but uh, definitely is uh, a need to uh, begin the process of what that means and, and a, a further, a lot more discussion, obviously. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just to let council know, uh, I have hard copies of the report for for all of council, if want. Okay. <clears throat> so in, in this, the intention of this is just to say that we've, we've received it and then We'll have to sort of make a decision on how we go forward from here. So, moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the Swan River Centennial Arena Assessment Recommendation Report be received. Any further discussion? All in favor? I assume now it just gets referred to my to the committee. That's and right. We have yeah. Okay. Okay. Next resolution moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the handy van report for October 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, next we have the managers or management meeting. Would you find me excused for a personal moment? Absolutely. Uh, manager uh, minutes, sorry, management minute, minutes, can't speak. <laughs> Uh, we have from October the 4th, October the 18th, October the 25th, and the 1st, so there's lots there. I hope that everybody had an opportunity to do some reviewing over the weekend and, and yesterday to uh, ask any questions that they may have to Mr. Poole. Go ahead, Councillor Delorey. Um, from the October 4th, I believe it is, minutes, uh, references the upcoming uh, Gar uh, garbage bylaw, uh, garbage pickup bylaw, um, and I assume that you're trying to get that uh, some first reading sometime in the new year or in the in the end before the end of the, this year. Yes. Um, could uh, perhaps if I could ask that the chairman of uh, uh, transportation and environmental health services, Councilor Morio, if we could put uh, that bylaw on the agenda for a meeting. Um, are you are you wanting to have that on the November twentieth meeting or not, or not till December? I would prefer it on the twentieth because it gives us some leeway. Yes. Okay. If we could if we could have a, a committee meeting prior to that meeting, just so that the committee could go over that uh, that bylaw and perhaps also the discussion with the garbage pickup. Councillor Friesen. Uh, this is more for Patty, if you wouldn't mind passing it on to her. Um, I had a request from uh, an Aquafit person that feels the people instructing are not up to date on how to teach aquasizing, and they're wondering if these people have been trained or if they could be trained. They feel it would bring a lot more people out if the people doing the training, doing the teaching, actually knew what they were doing. Because this person said that it's very sad. They don't know the cardio. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. So if you could ask her and ask her maybe to <coughs> call me so I can get back to this I can pass that person. on to yeah. Patty to yeah. get an answer for you. Yeah, because if anybody can be instructed on how to, you know, even if one person knew how to train the rest, right? It just means I guess it's like a thousand dollars to be to be certified as a aquatic. What are you called? Aquasize instructor. I don't know the answer to that either. But if you could bring that to her attention and maybe just ask her to call me. Will do. Thank you. 
Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the management minutes be received. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carries. <coughs> Next, we have 8.6 council members uh, reports. So I will start tonight with Council Wintoni. I don't really have things for throwing me on the spot. Um, I don't really have a, anything to talk about at this time. I'm not. Yeah, I'm still getting my feet wet, obviously. I did have one, um, I think this is the <coughs> opportunity that I get to ask questions to council that have been brought forward by other groups or ratepayers and things like that. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. It's your open time. It's my open time. Um, there was has been one question um, that was asked by the Chamber of Commerce um, in regards to snow removal. Um, they are... We are seeking or asking the question to the town if we could have some support in regards to um, snow removal on that site based on um, having shared relationships, um, the town owning the property, not the building, um, and just having an open relationship with the town and the Chamber of Commerce moving forward in positive directions. Uh, we take care of the lawn maintenance um, during the summer and we're looking for some added support from the town in terms of snow clearing and that's just in regards to right in front of the swan and the um, parking lot there um, so I don't think that decision can be made on that at this time but I'm bringing that forward to um, that department if we can move or ask that question I guess okay. if that's something that is doable or not doable okay. That's everything I got at this point. Thank you. So that some of that could be deferred to uh, Council Morio's uh, uh, committee. Other meetings. So, okay, Council Morio. Um, I guess since uh, we're just getting tonight, we'll be going through our appointments to the new committees. We haven't done a whole lot, but. Uh, um, one of the personnel committee or the general government uh, and finance committee has been meeting um, with continuing on with the interviews, new CEO selection. Uh, we've met a number of times going through that process um, as that get, uh, process continues. And, um, other than that, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. I went to a Swan Valley Settlement and Immigration Services meeting last night. Uh, we've got nine board members, plus our chair and our coordinator. Um, I found out our new Swan Valley West rep is Daryl Pierpont, and of course he didn't know about it, so he wasn't there last night, but I have since let them know when the next meeting is. Um, the needle thing I talked to the RCMP. Um, Hats off to the Lions for the off-leash dog park. It is uh, great. Um, we're having a festival of trees again this year, being held at the library. I don't know if the town would like to put a tree in it or not. What do you think? It's kind of a good uh, way to teach your horn. Anyway, think about it. I need a tree if you do. Um, I think that's all. I can't see anything else. Don't forget Remembrance Day. Sunday, come to the hall. It's a great way to show your support. Thanks. Thank you. So that Christmas tree, that's uh, like a real tree or, or a, a no. fake tree? Okay. You want, I can donate one to you. Oh, that would be good. Okay. What do we put on it? Whatever you want. <laughs> no, no, no. I need input. Input. Okay. Councillor Delorier. Um, Councillor Morio alluded to the uh, general government uh, committee meetings. We've had a couple of those since the election. Uh, still working on hiring a CAO, as was mentioned. Uh, on the weekend, I also had an opportunity to have a meeting with the um, Minister of Health, the Honorable Cam Friesen. Um, we had, uh, for, the, for the short time we had together, we had uh, two points we, we wanted to bring up with them, two points that council's been working past council had been working on and uh, 
we uh, would like to carry forward our uh, I carried forward uh, with him and those points being uh, moving the northern patient transport uh, line which on the east side of the province is the 52nd parallel and the west side of the province is the 53rd parallel we our hospital is the only one that's affected by that so uh, we did some did some lobbying on on uh, on that front and then uh, the, the response was tepid at best uh, on, on that for file, uh, on a more positive note, uh, we seem to get a lot better response to our proposal. Like I was able to put the proposal in the minister's hands we, uh, as far as our CT scanner uh, project, um, trying to get a CT scanner for our, our uh, hospital here. Um, so just to uh, let council know, the, it's, the minister, he was, he was aware of it, but he now is a lot more aware of it, a lot more, uh, a lot more aware of the details. Um, and we'll have another chance to uh, lobby on, on behalf of those two fronts when uh, we meet with them again in two weeks in Winnipeg or in three weeks in Winnipeg. So uh, uh, other than that, uh, nothing else to report. Councillor White. Well, it was fairly busy. Uh, as of a CMHA meeting uh, on October 18th, and, and that's specifically about the harm reduction. And the activities uh, trying to use <coughs> methyl, methylphetamine, methyl, 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 what is the word? Amphetamine. Amphetamine, thank you, you should know it too. Uh, regardless, like uh, some of the strategies are pretty scary at best from a layperson's perspective, so they have a, an entity here working with who is being paid, so we'll, we'll hope there'll be some positive things there. We certainly have a significant issue relative to methamphetamines uh, and needles being shared with uh, obviously spreads HIV and uh, to see, so uh, they're staying positive. Uh, Swan Valley Outdoor is not really related, but they've raised $25,000 on October 20th. That will be spent in the, the Swan River Valley, so that will help our community and all members around it. Uh, then again, of course, we had the meeting with the new and the older, or whatever the word is, new old counselors. I, I appreciated getting together with this team and talking about where we're coming from, what we're about, and making plans to work collaboratively. Then the uh, Swan River Friendship Center, I went to their annual general meeting, their housing department. And I think they have 80 plus homes in, in, in our community. Those guys pay taxes on that, I have to assume. Very integral part of our community. And uh, Tanya Powell is the contact person with that housing and doing really good work. So I, I'm, I'm really pleased to be part of that team now and then. Uh, the LP SAC meeting, uh, because of the crazy weather, they're having trouble getting into the woods to get timber. And as LP goes, so goes the valley to a significant degree. And a recent hire in the last six months a year has been Todd Yakalashik, a swan river boy. And his job is procurement. He's in charge of the woodlands operation to bring wood into our community. And he's uh, stepping forward and volunteering at other entities within the valley. Then on October 30th, I went to Paramount Health in Brandon. So it's kind of interesting, some of the overlap with Mr. Fries. And, uh, we met with Ian Shaw. And Ian is one of the hair ch shared services guys. And his idea is where that may or may not go. And Karen Herb is there, the acting deputy minister, and concerns about uh, where health care is going. And I, I echo the concern in the new mental health board. I don't think there's anybody north of Nipua on the mental health board, which is a concern to me because in the Parkland region, specifically this area north, we have some significant mental health issues and opiate issues that, that have to be addressed. And Dr. Brock Wright was there, and he's in charge of setting up the whole shared service program. And he said they were talking about some air service ideas on how to make things more accessible for people. And I heard your comment. I'll follow up on Dr. Wright with that, because he is going to be somewhere soon where I'm going to see him again. They have a $600 million budget, and there were 2.2 million surplus as of today. They may all be gone tomorrow, by the way, so it's, but uh, that's a lot of money. And they talked about the Virgo report, that's a new report brought up to government, specifically dealing with mental health and, and the ideas that were evolved is mental health and flow chart is like a, like a, a pyramid and everything to date has been at the top of the pyramid. This guy's got mental health, what we do with it? This guy, well, what do we do now? As opposed to how do we prevent this from the bottom up, or getting to the young people and talking about anxiety, talking about issues they have at home or at school, diet, nutrition. And so they're trying to change the focus, not just from the top of the pyramid to the bottom. So I found that really interesting. I think I mentioned earlier, there was evidence shared <coughs> that the met met methamphetamine bad guys are really pushing up their sales programs right now with the legalization of marijuana. They want to get more people hooked. It's 
cheap, 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 and it's easy to access and easy to put into your body. So there, you know, it's after so I said, you guys go home and hug your kids because boy, there's a lot of people. There's, there's children being born right now in Brandon Hospital and probably others who are drug addicts, and it's putting a huge pressure on the maternity services operating that and it's a, that, that building. Then uh, we had a safe house meeting and the safe house ladies, I love dearly, they're just trying to do good stuff. They're trying to change their focus a little, they're looking for some independent uh, people of significant wealth to maybe buy a building for them that's already built. They're looking at two properties perhaps in our community that may or may not be available, so I'll sit with uh, Mr. Poole and see if they fit our, our zoning bylaws and let the girls know. So. Uh, they work so hard, six, eight years now. Those girls were trying to find to help people, but that Virgo report gives them reason to be excited because mental health and mental health with addictions is uh, obviously something we've got to talk about. One in four, so do the math, two of us have an issue with mental health. I usually have my, uh, my lorazepams with me, but they're not, but I function fairly regular. So I think it's something we have to get out of the closet and we have to be open and frank with one another. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Councillor White. I was wondering if you're going to run out of paper there or something. But you're scared, right? Sir? Go ahead, Councillor. Great. Thank you. Well, I don't have a lot to report. The only yeah. committee I've dealt with was the um, governance uh, committee to speak of, and the other committees haven't met. I, I have a couple of questions. One is, uh, like, how do we know or what are, how do we get the material for the Structures or mandate um, of the various committees. We've had the committee assignments for a while. So we, I, I haven't pushed it because I assume tonight we confirm them and then then we're officially in those roles. So um, what my question is: Is there some process? So I I, I would my greatest fear um, as a lawyer is having a court case and not showing up. So as a committee member, my greatest fear is exactly what happened to. Uh, our friend from Swan Valley West. There's a meeting, and nobody knows about it. So, how do? What's the process for that? Just to clarify. Me. As far as how often that you're calling meetings, no, or when? Well, no, no, no. I, I know. I for, for, for when I'm for my committees, I, I I'm pretty clear on how I sure call meetings. <laughs> but but for instance, I belong to Swan Valley Recreation District. Right. When do they meet? How do we know when they meet? Where, where, where do we get the background material? Yeah. So on that one, I, I was actually going to probably sit down with you, you know, separately on some of those things Perfect. because there, there, there needs to be, especially the new counselors, some backup information on that. And, and recreation, uh, Swan Valley Rec, there's a lot of information there. Even Councillor Doré, he's been on there that would be able to fill you in on a lot of that. Now, who's, who are the players on that committee, and, and what, it, what the whole sure we have organization is? An ongoing file that we can copy or something. I believe that uh, this. Okay. Hinkleman would going forward, that. going forward, I yeah. want us to have a file so that that, that it, there's an institutional memory, so that we don't end up with, you know, council to where he gets hit by a boss, and I'm sitting here going. Well, I'd love to answer, but I, I my, my, uh, my uh, seance person, I can't remember what they call but isn't available, so I can't talk to Council <laughs> You know, uh, there should be I some understand. process. Yeah, you're okay. right. I have. You're cool. Cal Councilor Gray's still on. <laughs> um, I do have two other questions. Um, I thought there was some kind of planning for AMM that we were going to do, whether it was tonight or some other night. Is there some other time you were doing that? I other actually class? thought. I actually thought that we would maybe do that maybe a little bit closer to that because then okay. everybody would have a chance maybe to meet with the RCMP, with that committee and, and a few others okay. and then we'll be able to get together. Perhaps at our next council meeting we can meet maybe a half an hour or an hour before and we can talk about that because that will be on the 20th so we'll be still uh, sure. a little bit before I, I just, and we'll have a full planning and that would then anybody that has questions about what it all means or what we need to cover as far as the ministers or the commission and so on. I'm more interested in that piece of it is is making sure that we have clear pictures yeah. of what we're going for mm -hmm. and what we want Same to say. Well, I agree because, yeah. you know, I, I don't want us to go and sit down and, and look at each other, just chat a little bit. We need to get there. Don't waste anybody's time. Get to the point and Perfect. move on. Okay. Councillor or Grace. Well, I'll, yield, still, uh, I'll yield my time for the moment. <laughs> for the so moment. anxious, okay. I do have other things. Well, you, you said two. No, I didn't. Councillor White. You, will, you, will you be going over these committees at the end of the meeting? We will be. Okay, and the, the third thing, of the two apparently, 
um, <laughs> is is the, you everybody here knows I'm big on, on getting us into a strategic planning process and a, a, a process of thinking outside of the little individual day-to-day -day things not that we don't have to take care of housekeeping but um, I think that's been the significant um, challenge for, for this council so have we and I talked to you about this a lot in your worship are we planning some time for that or is that after we get our new CAO? Well, in my opening remarks, I kind of, I kind of talked a little bit with Councillor Wintoni about this and, and how do we, you know, start moving forward. And I thought that, you know, that analysis, we talked the SWOT analysis, that we can maybe open that up first. And I was I wanted to send out an email to each of the members of council okay. so that they could start working on that independently. So that way then when we sit down at a meeting, we're not like looking at each other going, what does this mean? They'll be able to at least look at it, put on pen what their thoughts are then when we do start to meet then some of that steps are already done obviously uh, when once we have our CEO in place more of that will start to I, drive forward I will if um, I put this done a lot of that the risk of that is that people come with entrenched positions and so what you get is evaluations of that and and really the SWOT analysis strength weakness operating threat right everybody knows what it means mm -hmm. um, really that the strength of that is that you it goes on without evaluation and you do the evaluation later so it's it's really important not to come too prepared to that process I, I so I, I just urge you to be that okay. because what I would hate to see is us get to that first meeting and already start debating entrenched positions and I think that will be counterproductive. I, okay. I may be wrong and you may be entirely right, but I mean, well, well I'm not saying these. I'm not saying that everything that I am proposing is completely hundred percent right. I just thought that I felt that because we don't have that person in place right now right. that we need to somehow get our feet going yeah. forward and and, uh, and determine some type of yeah. a plan. I think I outlined that you know, with a you know, with the priorities with us, and as far as with administration, and also with you know the four to twelve year vision, and all that. But yeah, the whole thing comes together. I spoke with uh, Mr. Poole even about you know the strategic planning and all that, and he was very excited to hear about uh, the, the the thoughts of that, as well as pointing out with asset management, which Absolutely. is also very important. So I, I I think from my point of view, anyways, and how I feel, I think that. I will 100% okay. agree with you that we need to move in that direction. Okay. I, I won't belabor. The last thing, which is sort of two things together, one after the second from the last, um, is it usual to send out congratulations to other municipalities about and or other groups? Because I know, for instance, that uh, Chief and I was just re-elected as were all but one of the councillors. And I don't know if we've sent congratulations, but, yeah, yeah. but but we actually have to work at building better relations, and that would be a huge deal. Which brings me to the second thing: um, How does the Swan Valley Municipal Relations? I think it's fairly narrowly described here, and I'm hoping it's broader than that. Um, how do we start that process? Because I really think that's something that um, can't wait. And here's here's why. Um, Hospital Delaria and I had this good conversation before, and others have had this conversation. We really are at a critical time, and, and here's why. For us to make significant changes, you have to have a certain critical mass, and we've had a, a declining mass. And if you don't have that critical mass, then making changes is, is like rearranging the chairs on the Titanic. Um, so we need to move quickly to reevaluate what we're doing and get better processes in place. And so that's the, that, that and the treaty, or the, uh, we call it treaty entitlement, I think, here, but the Indigenous Relations um, Committees, I, I see them very much as being interrelated. I think that, that's, that if we narrowly focus on the municipalities and then narrowly focus on the Indigenous Relations, we're making a huge mistake. So, so. I, I just wanted to speak on, on uh, Councillor Gray's comment on the uh, uh, municipal relations and, and in the past as far as long as I've been here it's kind of been on a, a, an ad hoc basis as far as an ad, we deal with, with our other municipalities, our neighbor municipalities when we need to as far as 
whether it be shared service agreements or landfill agreements or uh, anything of joint interest or concern. So it, it, it really hasn't been an ongoing file. It's kind of something that, oh, this issue needs dealing with. You know, we, we have a three year uh, shared service agreement and that which expires in a year's time. So negotiations would start and then when they were over, we, we would probably only see each other, you know, at G5 meetings when we, when we which are basically information only meetings at this point in time. Which, uh, so that, that's pretty much been the extent of our intermunicipal relations, so. Can, can we change that? Can we, can we say to the other municipal, the other four municipalities, and for that matter, the you know, in, Indigenous communities that surround us, that, that we think hosting a meeting and having a discussion about how our municipalities are and, and governments are interrelated and how uh, we need to have a cogent, overreaching, broad plan. Um, uh, otherwise, we'll have a problem. And, and we may not be able to get there. I, I recognize some of the challenges because I know some of the personalities, but, but, uh, but at the end of the day, just not doing it would be, in my mind, dereliction of our duty. And, and I agree. On both parts that you mentioned, and, and eventually if those two come together as one, because it is basically the same thing, yeah. you know, uh, Councillor White. I think those two or three, because of the Indigenous Indi communities and well, Indigenous municipal and, and municipal affairs. And ourselves. Yeah. Sorry. So, and I would encourage whoever's setting it up, let's have it in Saptuaic, let's have it in Pacific, let's have it in their home, because I, I, I just think that's important to go to the other person's home. And, from hockey days, you know the bad guys on Minnesota play the video guys. They hate, uh, some of them don't like us. I'm, see, I've only been here 50 years, so I haven't got that anger against them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it's important to go out to there. And we've talked to uh, Chief, Chief uh, Jedi and help me, specific. Ellen, just we have talked to Ellen often. Ellen, we want to come out. You buy us dinner, we'll bring you coffee, whatever it is. But, yeah, 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 but the Elvers, the buzz signs, it's just, it's, it's still. So I think those are great, and being proactive instead of reactive. Yes. Great idea. Okay. Oh, my God. With That's a big, best idea. That's, That's it? it? That's it? Okay. okay. So as far as for me, uh, I guess the first thing I should mention is that I did have a chance to sit in a, a health facility foundation uh, meeting that was a couple weeks ago and uh, one of the uh, issues that was raised was that the current clinic that we have which houses I think right now approximately 15 doctors and two nurse practitioners it was raised that <coughs> they're running out of room they've found that they've run out of room and they will have to at some point in time in the near future and what that really means in the near future, I don't know. But the discussion has to have be made that um, what does that mean as far as expansion? We know that the provincial, there's no provincial dollars as far as expansion goes. But is there, uh, you know, uh, dollars from private or corporate or, or municipal? I don't know. But I'm just fair warning everybody that there is that discussion coming. Um, medical services, I think that might have to be part of that discussion, all councils, not only from the town of Swan River, but also from the whole entire valley, that has to have some kind of discussion about what this means, because they're worried that if we, if there is not an expansion of some type, that perhaps maybe we'll not have the doctors that we need to service the community. I did ask the question, you know, what is that number as far as how many uh, uh, um, patients would they max out as, or what can they offer to? And I, th I think that we have registered right now 8,500 8, patients right in that clinic right now. And I asked the question, what is the target? What, and they didn't really have a number, but they felt that it was much higher than that. So anyways, it's just food for thought right now. I think that there's going to be more discussion once the committees all come together because some of that has changed significantly in the last election. So um, I was asked to bring it up so that everybody has an idea to, or at least to think about this. Councillor White. Uh, I was with uh, Miles Haverlick on the weekend and he has 10 pharmacists, 28 doctors, 30, 40 support staff in there. And he's just the best, in his mind, the best model 
is they, they get these young doctors to put some cash on and they buy the building, they build the building, then they have a vested interest in the building, they were less likely to depart as quickly and uh, they're more interested in making sure things well, work well. That's one model and uh, it's certainly something that we'll, I think uh, Council Mori and I will make a point of moving for coffee one of these days and say we're, how can we do things together. And I like your idea involving the whole G5. Thank you. Okay. And, then, um, and then of course I just met, I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting that I had a chance to sit with uh, and chat with our, informally of course, uh, with our uh, interim uh, Staff Sergeant Ray Campbell who is uh, traveling here uh, for the short term anyways before we have uh, a new one that's uh, transferred either that person being coming from Thompson or, or himself we're not too sure. One of the things that I think that our uh, government and finance committee needs to be working on is creating a new bylaw that covers the selling of cannabis in the town of Swan River it's something that we have not got to yet so that we'll have to have some help with the from the CEO and, and the committee as well so that committee is going to be busy working on bylaws uh, I feel that the protective services committee should be reviewing like I said earlier the RCMP uh, and other community partners uh, possibly of a town hall meeting to discuss discuss crime opioids in the community and community involvement and uh, also with our finance and government uh, we need to talk about uh, soon budget 2019 and what the possibility of uh, public consultations will look like. So that's it for me. Thank you, okay. Mr. Mayor. Sure. In your discussions with the um, Swan Valley Health, um, Health Foundation, did, and I don't know if this is you or it's Council White, or I'm not sure if you're <coughs> responsible, but um, and, and correct me if I don't have a wide range of experience with the hospital, um, but is there a discussion about increasing or returning some of the utility of the hospital in terms of surgery, in terms of those kinds of things? Is there any discussion of that? Do what? It's my understanding we don't do surgeries here, right? The goal is to have the surgery. Right. So, so we there, need is more a, equipment. there is a discussion uh, of huge, that. Huge, huge. Okay. Yes. Because I hadn't heard about that, and I, and and. For me, that's a huge deal is because when we get to strategic planning, I mean, making sure that you're a centralized facility for health care is a huge deal in any of the models that I see for economic development. And uh, surgery, having um, lots of obstetricians, all of those things are fundamental to any vision I can see where we can change the direction. His Worship, uh, Council of the Lord, met with Mr. Friesen, they gave them the template to bring this get a CT scanner here, yeah. and there's lots of options with, we seem optimistic that we can find the money locally with the Lions Clubs and the money hopefully right. Mayor will, will find. And what the doctors are telling us, we want to work on the, on the tools we've been trained on. Without the CT scanner here, it would be difficult to get the surgeons, because the surgeons want to come and use those tools. So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? So I, in my mind, let them, let them worry about the building. Let's find the CT scanner, let's build the CT scanner, Perfect. they will come. And talking about economics, at the half a dozen seminars, the average doctor brings into our community, eight, into a community, $800,000 per year because of the people coming for treatments, or hotels, motels. So we've got 12 doctors, that's eight million bucks, 10 doctors, at 800,000? Um, well, you're right. Just further with that, um, like I, I'm just new going into that, you know, uh, that position. So there's a lot of learning that I'm going to have as far as with Penny and and, and the whole uh, board and all that. But definitely from what I've been hearing is that they, they talk about shared health and making certain areas hubs. And, and I think Swan River honestly is being looked at as one of those, it is one. and or is one. Okay, corrected. So uh, moving forward, that's definitely some of the things that we're pushing for. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mr. Poole, do you have anything to add? Uh, there's not much that I can say that isn't in my my superintendent report or the management meetings. Just a couple of the big items is is uh, I'm sure learning on process, reviewing the town uh, procedures bylaw and the Manitoba procedures manual. And uh, and the utility clerk that you'll that you'll see that has resigned. Uh, we've been pretty busy. I've gotten Darren immediately heading up the training of, of a newer clerk in that position so that we can 
go on without any hitches in December when we send out our next billings. We've got an ad in the paper and me and Terry will handle the, the interviews, but anyone on the personnel committee that wishes to be a part of that can be. Uh, and just the third big one on our, our list, or out of four, is, is the bylaw deadlines. Mainly the two boring bylaws and the garbage bylaw that I want to get done this year. But uh, yeah, I'll be sending some information on all three of those bylaws, hopefully by the next council meeting. And uh, securing grants. But I'll have more information in the future for that, but we are working heavily on the securing our grant claim for the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund for the 6th Avenue lift station and the Manitoba Water Services Board, million dollars for the well control buildings. And just a personal point, I like what I hear with the council's vision on the committees. That's on the administration side, that is, that's good to hear. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Councilor DeLore has a question. Uh, on your comment on the exit interview, will, will you forward a report from your exit interview to the personnel committee? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Montgomery. Mr. Pooley, in regards to grant money, in one of the um, uh, recommendation letters that I had read from you, um, based on some of the decisions that happened in the past, are you finding, um, and then it talked about in your letter in regards to um, the possibility of not receiving grants, have you been struggling with any, um, or uh, are you or will you be or foreseeing any struggling struggles with grants that we may may have lost out on in based on your statement in, in one of your reports? Uh, what, I gotta say no for the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. I've dealt with that one, but I, I'm not 100% sure on the, on the Water Services Board as of right now. It's uh, still a question that I've asked. And I, the agreement, uh, I, I'm just trying to get by that agreement uh, that's been sent to me that states that uh, the lowest bidder must be selected. So I'm trying to get around that right now. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Councilor Gray. Is, is that about the resolution that we're reconsidering? That, uh, well, I don't want to honestly go into it too much because okay. I'm, I'm right in the discussions with them okay. and hopefully this will not be an issue. So it's that's not a yes and that's not a no. All I'm asking is, is, is that the the grant that's associated with that, is that what we're talking about? And any future ones. Right. And, and let it, yeah, let it be known that if we do not pick the lowest bidder where there's federal dollars attached to it, uh, okay. like the BCFs, we will not get it. Okay. Um, is it, just one more question, is it usual for personnel committee members to sit on any interviews other than the CAO? Because, no. Okay, because I, can tell you, I'm not <clears throat> intending to. I, no. yeah. and I would be stunned if anybody did. No, uh, it's, it's a, you know, I think being a polite invitation, but the thing is, as far as council goes, the daily operations underneath the CEO have nothing to do with this body here, as far as hiring and all that goes. Yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, good to hear. Anything else? No. Okay. All right, so we'll move on to bylaws 9.1 and 9. Point two, obviously there is no resolution there because that actually is in review right now. Um, I guess there was a question whether or not we wanted to bring forth a resolution, but um, right now <coughs> it's in review, so if Councillor Delory, if you want to speak on that. I guess I can, I'll just speak quickly on 9.1 and 9.2 at the same time. Uh, our our general government and finance committee has already looked at these two bylaws. We have some recommendations, uh, quite a few recommendations for the procedures bylaw and uh, just some minor recommendations for the organizational bylaw. Um, but we're not quite there yet where we, we are wanting to bring them forward to council. So uh, we'll carry them <coughs> to uh, the November 20th uh, council meeting and, uh, and hopefully by then we'll have some uh, recommendations carried forward to council. Any other committee members? I just want to co comment on one of the procedures because it has a, a personal effect on me. One of the procedures is seven point one, is it? It's the one with the with attendance by. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm 
not going to be in Swan River, I'm not going to be in Canada through all of January. And, but I, wherever I go, I have worked. It doesn't matter where I go, I take my computer and so on, and I want to be part of, of those discussions. And so one of the things I'm, I'm alerting you is, what, is that we, I think we're coming forward with the recommendation that there will be an ability, if you're outside of Swan River or incapacitated in some way, that, that you will be able to participate by audio visual. That will have an impact because we have to establish some way of a screen. We have to have um, speakers so that the person on the thing can be heard, and our microphones have to be upgraded so that people speaking can be heard by the person on that. So I wanted to. There's two parts of that. I wanted to alert council members that that's likely to come, um, and I want to to alert management that we need to start looking at what the cost of that would be because that's part of that process. If we develop that and then and then sort of blindside you. And so there will be some cost associated with that, but I think that's fundamental. And it's also fundamental for the purpose of things like, um, when we had the CAO interviews, it stunned me to hear that we didn't have that process. And, and just any kind of thing where we're gonna deal with people at some distance, that we should have that capacity. Absolutely hard to have. It's quite simple, but it's, there is cost. And so part associated with that, which is coming next meeting, um, I personally would like to know that we've started the process of, of acquiring what the likely costs are and then as long as we'll get into our uh, procurement process and, and procure it. But um, if we need to move on that. Right. Because of, uh, just because of the timelines, that's why I'm a little sensitive to it. Fair enough. Um, was that it? That was it. <clears throat> Council Morio from that committee, are you having for that? No, it's all been spoken for. Okay. Okay, so moving on <coughs> to uh, the resolutions, uh, moved by Councillor White <coughs> by Councillor Gray. Resolved that the Council's Falls be hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check number 23315 to number 2341420 for a total of $310,756.44. Payroll accounts from check number 4328. To number 4333 for a total of 7,799 and four cents. And payroll comes from check number 4334 to number 4341 for a total of 98,895 and 49 cents. Discussion or questions? Councillor Gray? No, I moved it. I'm just voting. <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Just just a I would have thought that for this one. What's that? I thought you would have questions. No. That's okay. Do you want me to? No, no. You used your two. Approved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray, resolved that uh, who will be attending the Manitoba, Association of Manitoba Municipalities Convention held November 26th and 28th in Winnipeg. Who will be attending, or all will be attending? All, I think. Who will be there? So everybody will be there. Okay, I'll write that in later. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Carried. <coughs> Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray, resolved that the minutes of the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation Dis District, October the 15th, 2018. Min meetings, minutes be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the financial statements for the seven months, seven months ended July 31st, the eight months ended August 31st, and the nine months ended September the 30th, 2018, be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White, resolved that Kayla Belko and Holden Cross be hired as part of, uh, sorry, hired as part-time lifeguard instructors, uh, effective November the sixth, two thousand eighteen. Discussion. All in favor? Okay. Just, 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 this isn't related to that because I moved it, but and I'm perfectly happy with that. But I, I know that that's something that we do. I see in every set of minutes. It, is there a reason, given that we have no role in it, that we do that? Is it required by the new SPLAT? Because I don't we, think it is. I, I don't know. I think that we can look into that. Could, yeah, I can, can we, look into that. Yeah. Can we look into that? Because I, quite candidly, I think it's inconsistent for us to say we're not involved in the hiring, but we're approving the hiring. I, I just right. think 
as long as we have a policy and says this is the procedure you're following and there's a, an appeals procedure to us if someone says that, we, that management didn't follow the procedure, outside of that, I have no interest in holding <coughs> I agree. Councilor Morio. Uh, we had asked that question of our previous CEO, and the response we got was it was a confirmation that Council is agreeing with administration's well, hiring. I know. So, so. Councilor White. Uh, having said that, and I suspect having seven people have a quick glance at Peter, who's applying for the job, we may be privy to some knowledge that wasn't presented at the interview. And that did come out with one individual a year or so ago who had a fairly questionable background. And they're hiring this person, we said. And some of us, two or three of us, knew that we weren't happy with that. References that weren't on the list, as it were. Then I think we should fix the freaking policy and not piddle around. It's well, either we're going to be involved in the hiring or we're not. I don't want to be, I think it's wrong. And I would rather, and, and because what happens, let's, let's, let's take your scenario. We all just don't know who the person is and we let someone slip through and we've confirmed it without any process. That just seems to me ridiculous. I, I don't see why we're doing it. We've, look, whoever the CIO is, our, our really only decision is, do we trust the person or we don't? If we don't, then there's a solution. If we do, then stay the hell out of the road and let him do his job. Councillor I don't disagree with uh, anything Councillor Grease said as far as procedure, but I think right now those well, procedures aren't quite there, and yeah. until they are, I'd, I'd be more comfortable with, with them still coming to this table until this council gets to review what, what those For procedures are. Yes. yes, I yeah. agree. Okay. I'm, not say, I'm just saying in the long run, that's not, like I, I'm, I was willing to move it because I, I know that's how we do it. I just wanted to question whether we shouldn't just change the process. Mm -hmm. well, we can look into that. So for the time being, we'll still bring new hires to this table until the procedure gets looked at and yeah. and reviewed. And so we can look what we have in writing, the personnel committee, I guess, would like yeah. to see what we have currently. Yeah. we got a few other irons in the fire, so that yeah. may be a month or so away, but until then. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White, whereas the financial plan for the year 2018 included a transfer to rec recover previous debt years deficit of $39,709.33 in the general operating fund in 2015 fiscal year. Be it hereby resolved that $39,709.33 be transferred from the current year surplus to accumulated surplus. Discussion? All in favor? Your Worship, I think you missed by 10.4. No, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we don't have a we don't have a resolution on that. That was so. You have a, a letter there that came from the Animal Protection League that was actually uh, discussed at one of our G5 meetings, and it was uh, recommended that each each council would. Uh, point or a representative to a committee to discuss this uh, issue with the uh, Animal Protection League and exactly what it, what it would mean or what their invol what our involvement really uh, looked like because uh, they felt that it was a bit vague so um, really? yeah so I guess um, yeah. go ahead Councilor Gray I apologize for interrupting you. That's fine. Um, I didn't find it vague at all. I mean, it's exactly what we talked about in terms of the fire department. It's, shouldn't we have some consistent plan across the entirety of the region to do everything that municipalities need to do? And, and I, I, I think it may be that it's not fully fleshed out. I'll, I'll concede that point. But it's pretty clear what's suggested is that all the municipalities work together, have um, a significant number rather than having everybody look at their own thing and then all of a sudden we have gaps. Isn't that a, a pretty, I mean, again, I, I think that that's part of when we talk with, with people that we don't need to have a, a I'm going to put this, not, well, I'm not going to put it in my name, it's going to bluntly say it. When we create ad hoc committees like that, 
the crime goes. They, they go into this committee and, and they go and they never get dealt with, almost always. And so that would be my concern because I think pretty clearly that, that like I said, I think that we need to start with sharing services and being much more integrated because I don't see us going forward unless we do that. So for me, this made a perfect this proposal, whether or not the specifics in it were accurate, because I think that's reserved to councils to decide. But whether or not the specifics were, it just seems to me that the, the logic of having interrelated um, services is so compelling that why wouldn't we do that? Okay. I, I'm, I'm looking around seeing new spaces in some cases, so I'm, <laughs> I'm a little concerned. Okay, uh, Derek. If I could, uh, I just wanted to add that I had a meeting uh, yesterday with the veterinarians uh, at the vet clinic, and they they are going to be compiling some information, and and uh, they do want collaboration from the Animal Protection League, the the vet clinic, and not just the town, the, all the municipalities. So what they want to provide is their info, and they're going to ask the Animal Protection League to do the same. And uh, uh, Ken Koka is in the meeting as well, so that when you, when this meeting does happen, the information is there. So I'm then I would probably think that under protected <coughs> services, we have animal control there. That that's probably something that that committee can be working with, perhaps Mr. Koka and yourself, and what they can come up with a solution. So what how or how we partner with uh, Swan Valley Animal Protection League. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Well, I think that what they're asking is that, that the municipalities <coughs> about something where the municipalities are jointly working on things so that there aren't a gap. So so that you don't have somebody is supposed to be in Benito and they're, they're missing. Now all of a sudden they get a bunch of calls because nobody's serviced in Benito. Instead, as a group, so that, that you know, if there was a problem in Benito, somebody's covering it. Sort of like fire department that there's a an emergency services pro process that's what I that's what I read from it I, I thought it was pretty clear yeah, teachers practice. Is that it? yeah yeah cool. I, I do believe they're they are asking for uh, uh, and you don't have to do this obviously but I do believe that they're asking for a member of council to be on to to be a part of this to be a part of this meeting because it I don't know what the intentions were but uh, I do work within a budget, and I've got to be harsh and truthful. Okay. So, Councilor White, then, no. at your committee, then? Uh, Am I in that committee? Yes, you are. You're the chairman so of that committee. Perhaps, perhaps you should appoint the chairman of the, that committee, then. Yes, that's probably a good idea. Do, do we need a resolution to that effect? Because I don't know if there's one on the table. There is no resolution on the table, but I, I don't think it's res it's necessary. Okay. So, Councilor White. Which committee? Swan Valley Island Protection League Joint Committee with the other municipalities. Remember from G5 back in in Birch River? I'm going to plead ignorance. You, oh, you actually missed that one. I rest my... Oh, so you appointed me because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This is your, this is this your came committee. The, this came from the G5 meeting. Uh, Swan Valley Island Protection League made a proposal. They want each of the municipalities to appoint a representative to a joint committee to... In Birch River? I was there. Wherever it was. Yeah, I was there. Okay. So you're clear on that. But it's not on, it's not on his list here. No. Uh, the letter from Animal Protection League? No, the letter there. saying I was on that committee. No. no. But we're, we're just, saying we're as just... chairperson of, of Protective Services, which Animal Control falls well, under, well, you can do that. There we go. <coughs> All right. Okay, so we'll go back to where we left off, and that was on 10.7. So uh, moved by oh. Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Whereas the financial plan for the year 2018. We did that. 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 We did Whereas the financial plan for the year 2018 included $17,840 for the Swan River Handy Transit Van, 
be here, uh, hereby resolved that 17840 be transferred from the general operating fund to the handy transit van operating fund. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Deloria, seconded by Councillor White. Whereas the 2018 budget for the Swan River Handy Transit Van included appropriation to reserve in the amount of $500, we hereby resolve that the $500 be transferred from the Handy Transit Van Operating Fund to the Handy, Tra Handy Transit Van Replacement Reserve Fund. Discussion? All in favor? Moved by Councillor Delore, seconded by Councillor White, <coughs> resolved that the resignation of Susan Logan from the position of utility clerk be accepted. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Just no just rising. You're doing an exit interview. It's you yeah. that does it? Yes. So, Delore, if we can put this whole process of regular interviews on our agenda. Okay. Okay, moved by Councillor uh, Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio, resolved that the 2018-19 appointment of council committees and its members be accepted as Schedule A. Any discussion? Councillor White. Yeah, I've just uh, whispered in my, my peers here, here, and I guess I'll keep with the committee. Did you see what I... I see what you were trying to do, yeah. Okay, is that okay with you? I, I will. Okay. I will be in favor of that if you want. Okay, thank you. So what uh, what we talked about was that, uh, ooh, I'm going to get it clear here. Page up. Go this way? Yeah. Okay, that I would move from uh, Utilities Water Treatment, where uh, Councillor Delorier has an excellent background because he's been on it forever, and I would switch with him from uh, Recreation and Cultural Services. That's okay with uh, Councillor Dory, it's okay with me. And I also create, and I should bring, well, I'm going to finish that one. You're on the standing committee? Yeah. You want to move from utilities to recreation? And yeah, elsewhere. and Jason move from recreation to utilities. The reason why I felt that Councillor Delorier needed to be on recreation is because of the history and some information that Councillor uh, Gray and Wintoni needed for uh, for some continuity in, in that department. So I felt that that's probably important and I that's my recommendation it should stay the way it is. That makes sense to me, but uh, <coughs> I have no zero background in the water world, period. That's fine, you'll learn. Well, and and uh, <laughs> Councillor Delore has a significant background in there and that's going to be a, a big deal coming on the road. And he can bring me up to date pretty quick on the centennial. Councillor Delore. Well, perhaps then, it, Knowing uh, his worship's intentions, uh, we could review it in a year's time. We, re we review the committees in a year's time. We can have a cabinet shuffle in uh, in uh, a year's time. And uh, I see the mayor as uh, his worship is on the committee, so he'll find out that he may have to do more work than he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's okay. Okay. All in favor? Carried. And, and there's one other thing, there's uh, there's no more council <coughs> freezes will be happy, there's no refugee committee, but I dropped you a note to that regard. I didn't see it. Also, also um, I just realized that you are in settlement services now. So you missed the meeting last night, I apologize for not letting you know. It's all good. It's all good. Feature. There's a spelling error, you know, it's my grade. There is, I, uh, uh, we'll get that fixed. And there's good. no more refugee committee. Good. Happy so birthday, Mr. Cool, if you can take note on uh, the spell, spelling error on number four, uh, Councillor Gray, and then also uh, the, uh, the committee that uh, refugee is yeah, no it's no more. And I can't see it happening for another for a while because it was a pretty owner's job for those volunteers looked after them to know. So just on that, I just wanted to also point out that. Um, when you are uh, calling your meetings that, uh, or, or at least the, the minutes anyways, if you, or not minutes, sorry, the agendas, if you can just copy me on the agendas, because 
I might want to attend them too. So if you are having a big meeting, then I might want to pop in. So. Okay, so we're moving on here. Let me get back to my page here. All right, so we do have camera moved by Councillor Lintoni, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that pursuant to section 152, three of municipal act, council go into committee and close this meeting to the public. Um, Mr. Poole, we have what items to discuss? A labor issue. Labor, okay. Is there something else we're gonna... We're going to discuss the strategy for recruitment. Right. Strategy on recruitment. Have that. All in favor? Carried. 